record on this computer. Perfect. This is a session where we're going to discuss your assignments, both of them. The first one is coming up soon, which is analysis of scientific literature number one. And the second one is towards the end of the portion with me or with the nutrition instructor. So depending on the group that you're assigned to, if you're in the nutrition portion, the second literature assignment uh, will be done with your nutrition instructor. If you are assigned to me or a fitness group, I should say, you will be doing the number two assignment with me. So we decided, Tony and I decided to deliver this um, presentation or guideline uh, presentation uh, in our portion so that it, it can benefit all students, no matter where they're going to deliver the presentation and do the literature number two assignment. Okay. So the assignment details. It's a three to four page critique of an empirical research study that has been published in a peer reviewed academic journal. Even this statement has a lot of information in it. And these are all coming from your uh, assignment packet. So three to four, four page of a critique of the, the article is in question. It should be a peer reviewed journal article, academic journal article. And then the second item, the study slash the article, they're the same thing. Article is the published version of the study for the lit number one paper will be given to you by your instructor and discussed in collaborative groups. I already assigned you that article, which is the Willis et al. article. The study slash article for the lit two will be selected by you and based on the topic slash subtopic your oral presentation group selects. It will need to be an experimental research study, experimental, and we'll go through all of the words that are included in this slide together. So it should be an experimental research study published in a peer reviewed journal and not a review paper or meta-analysis. Second, it should be recent published within the last 10 years. And we're gonna talk about the reason why. And it should be separate from the other three articles your group mates choose, definitely. You will each choose a different article on the same topic or subtopic. So what is an experimental research study? We need to talk about the uh, assignment after we cover what we're talking about by an experimental research study. So this is the approach. If you are coming from a scientific background, you'll understand this. And if you are coming from a social background, it still applies. And we'll talk about how the social studies are performed. So this is coming from the IFIC uh, article that I already gave you so that you know, you are now in the know of what I'm talking about. So an experimental research study uses the scientific approach, which we're going to talk about today, and which you see as a chart on the right hand side of the slide. And it emerges, the study emerges from a question based on past research findings or the interest of the researcher. So it all starts from, let's just quickly review this because I'm going to go into the de details of every step in this process later in, in the slide. Ask a question. So that would be your question. And I'm going to use my own uh, PhD topic, research uh, interests, and the question that I had. And, you know, and carry that through the slide so it makes sense. So you can also build your understanding with an example. So my question was, does the high intensity interval training, and I've been observing that since I'm a personal trainer, that's my life, and I've been prescribing that kind of exercise 
for my clients as well as for myself because I think it's very efficient way of working out. Um, it doesn't take too too much of a time of, uh, of your busy schedule, and it also builds cardiovascular endurance as well as muscular strength. So I look at it as a win-win. But I was curious to see if high-intensity interval training is better than continuous running or walking to increase your resting metabolic rate, which is the ca calories that you burn while you are resting, which is a positive. And everybody wants that. You know how people talk about, oh, my metabolism is so slow. I, I you know, gain weight even by drinking water. That's what they're talking about. And some past research, as I'm covering here, because the new research emerges from the past research, and I already read that. See, that's the second item in the chart in orange. Do background research. I did the background research, and I've seen that the high-intensity interval training seems like uh, increasing your resting energy expenditure for a couple of hours after you're done with the exercise. So I was curious how long that one to two hours can be expanded. Like, can I expand it to a day or two? That's what I was gonna experiment in the lab. So I would construct the hypothesis and I would say, I expect that is my hypothesis and it could be wrong, but that doesn't tell you that it's a bad study. I would say, uh, yes, high intensity interval training increases resting me metabolic rate for two consecutive days after the workout. Test with an experiment. So I would build my design of the study and everything and I test my, my, my participants, okay? And then I would uh, conclude if the procedure is working Yes, no, if the procedure, the lab design and everything is not working, I would redesign it. And if it's working, I would collect my data, then analyze my data with statistical uh, tools that I have available and the design that I, I design for my da data. And then I would con conclude that my results are aligning with my hypothesis or not aligning. So the research study is such a valuable data collection to tell me, yes, high intensity either on the left-hand side, either says, yes, high intensity interval training increases resting metabolic rate for two days in a row after you perform the exercise. Or you can say, no, it doesn't. It only lasts, let's say, four hours then I would publish my study and communicate the results with the research world. Yeah. I now, this is, this is happening with the uh, coronavirus um, vaccines. Go ahead, BJ. BJ, yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, thanks for your explanation so far. Uh, so I, I think, like, like my, at least my understanding, right, from what you're saying is that um, uh, the, the two scientific article assignments that will that will be given to us, I think, uh, and the first scientific article, the, the, the first one, right? The, the article will be given by you, right? We don't get to choose for the first one, no. Okay, all right. And, and, and so whatever article you're giving us for the first scientific one, we have to write a three to four page, like uh, research paper, like experimental research, right? Like yes. the, the experimental research, that, that's the one, at least from my understanding of the reading, the experimental one is that's trying to find like a cause and effect relationship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. So, okay. okay, is that correct? Okay. I'll go into more detail about that experimental research now. This okay. was just an overview of the scientific approach. Now yeah. let's look at this. Uh, researchers asked a question, okay? Um, and that question need to be measurable. Otherwise you cannot uh, test if that question uh, turns out to be yes or a no. Then they do a background research and they do this through library research, which you need to do too. Now it's so easy. You don't have to go to the physical library. It's all online. 
and they, they do further observations, okay? Observation is very important. You need to be able to relate this to your life, you know? Um, and then, I mean, it doesn't have to be your life, but uh, you should be able to build some observations about the question at hand. Then develop a hypothesis. This is an educated guess. Uh, this is important to uh, say uh, that, you know, you cannot just bluff something like um, I'm going to build a training program or let me say uh, this training program will increase, let's say, my height, okay? That's not even possible. So that question is not even valid or legitimate. It needs to be educated guess. That's why it needs to be based on the, the background research. Then we test the hypothesis by doing an experiment, analyze the data, draw the conclusion, and publish and present the results. Let's look at why we published the study. Well, the data first of all, is an addition to the body of literature. That is very important. And it's, it's like a drop in the ocean, but it's still a drop and it still changes things. Okay, so it is important to communicate this result to the rest of the research world. And others also can critique the methods and data and the data collection or conclusions and, or, or also, sorry, they can replicate the experiment, which is also such a valuable thing because then your results, if it, they repeat the result on a different set of uh, participants, for example, or the same exact participants, it'll uh, only support your uh, conclusions or your findings. Um, publishing research studies is viewed as a discussion among scientists. Conflicting data can result in public skepticism, which we have been seeing with the vaccines a little bit, uh, or rolls of the eggs uh, in diet. It's been changing as you can uh, imagine and as you already experienced with your life. Okay, so we will talk about this article thing, okay, uh, by the, the, uh, Vijay, uh, it applies to your question too. Uh, I already chose the first article and it's already assigned to you in the first assignment. It is an experimental research study and it is a legitimate study to write about. So don't worry about picking your article yet. We will talk about it in this sli uh, slideshow or presentation, but not yet. Now let's turn our focus to type of research studies. The reason what, why I'm having this slide in front of you, these are the categories, is for you to understand which ones to pick when it is time for you to pick your articles, not just for the second uh, assignment, but also consumer product assignment. It uh, calls for actually uh, finding three articles, peer-reviewed articles. So finding articles is a big thing for this class. There are two types of studies, observational and experimental. With, uh, so experimental has also two categories underneath it, basic and clinical research. Observational research investigates relationships, okay? So it is more um, relevant for the social sciences. For example, it can be a study that measures strength in children, young adults, and older adults. Or you can group the individuals into activity levels. You can still use this for public health purposes, for example. You can group them into older sedentary or older active. And data might suggest that, in general, young adults are stronger than children and older adults. But this needs to be supported with an experimental research, okay? So um, yes, it investigates relationships. You can 
start a study, uh, before you do an experimental study, you can start the entire um, research process with an observational uh, research and then you, you, you need to um, do an experimental research if it's a medical field. If it's a social sci sciences, um, you can observe people in their living environment, a natural living environment. You can find, you can think of studies like the relationship uh, of children with their teachers online in online education, stuff like that, okay? And then the, the second one is epidemiological studies. They are done on large populations to find relationships between two or more variables. Variables are very important. Um, often observational, but maybe experimental too. Studies distribution and determinants of diseases or other health outcomes in humans, okay? Large populations. And there are prospective and retrospective studies. Prospective studies looks at the future, so takes the participants today and then follows them over time. And retrospective recall of past data or previously recorded data. They look at the past. So for the purposes of our class, we're gonna be focusing on experimental research, okay? The experimental research, the first type is not basic research. Sorry, the slides shifted a little bit. So the, the basic research was the first type of the experimental study. Basic research may be conducted in vitro. I don't know if you've ever heard of this word, vitro, in vitro. Uh, that means in test tubes. Okay, so the microbes, the viruses, which they're doing right now, or you can, um, you can conduct this study with animals, um, which is right now, you know, it's more ethical than trying it on people. So you try the animals first, and then if it doesn't pose any dangers, then you can try whatever intervention, a, a medication or a vaccine or a treatment plan, then you can try it uh, with a clinical trial on humans. So when it is done on animals or in vitro, it is called basic research. And they investigate biological phenomenon, often at a cellular or molecular level at a lab. There are some uh, researchers in our field, in the exercise physiology field, who are interested in looking at the muscular development or hypertrophy or sarcopenia, waste of muscle tissue uh, through aging, for example, at the molecular level. So they don't even deal with humans, they just do it on um, animals, rats, okay? Um, it generates new knowledge or theories. You can even set new theories with basic research and results may not have direct application to specific clinical situations. Um, they're very valuable, very significant, but they might not work on real uh, populations. So it, you need to be careful about generalizing a, a, an animal study to uh, to humans, to you know, real life. That's why when you pick your studies, try to find human studies than animal studies. Okay. With for for this class's purpose. Going back to one slide because they're a little bit mixed. So the clinical trial was the second uh, type of our. Um, experimental research, which we are interested in. So we all came from the general, you know, research idea, looked at the observational and experimental basic research. And the final one type is a clinical research that we want for this class. So when you look at a consumer product and when you're gonna find three articles to, to analyze your product, you need to be finding human studies than animal studies, okay? 
or when you do your number two literature review, again, this needs to be a human study where they do experiments rather than surveys. Okay, heads up, take a note, because I've seen in the, in the past uh, students, especially with the psychological studies, like if exercise increases my mood or my mental health, and they go through, uh, the majority of the studies go through data collection by giving the participants um, questionnaires or surveys to fill out. And that is not as, uh, how do I say, scientific or valid as testing the participants directly or, you know, um, collecting your data from their uh, biological uh, markers, okay? You're saying so, sur surveys aren't allowed? Yeah, I, think that, that, I wouldn't that, say aren't allowed, but um, if I, I were you, I wouldn't go with a survey study. Yes, they are. They, that's why they're published. Uh, mm -hmm. But for this class, we would be more interested in looking at biological markers like heart rate, blood pressure, or hormone levels that show stress, like the cortisol hormone, for example, instead of just having the participant fill out you know, how they felt, uh, yeah. I would totally choose an article that, you know, there is real data collection. Yeah. So the gold standard of a clinical trial, you'll, you will hear this and you need to be mentioning this in your presentation and your paper that you're going to write. If the experimental design was including these uh, components, was it blinded or double blinded? Was it randomized or was it controlled? So the gold standard is a double blind controlled randomized study. And um, the majority of the studies that have been published are already um, adhering to these guidelines, double blind, randomized and controlled. And what are they? Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the controlled. Let's say, for my example, I'm going to test if my high intensity interval training uh, exercise will increase the resting metabolic rate on for two or one or two days. So I'll have my participants come to the lab. So I'll make them, okay, that's my experimental design. I'll make them work out with the high intensity interval training routine for 20 minutes. And then I'll be measuring their resting metabolic date for the following two days. They're gonna stay in the lab. That is a good study, but it's not a controlled study. When I have a controlled study, I would have a control group as well, okay, that do not do the high intensity interval training or I can have another group because I, my hypothesis, remember, was saying high intensity training is better than continuous, which is just taking a walk for 20 minutes. So I would have a group of people who do, who do the high intensity interval training exercise for, for 20 minutes, then walking or running for 20 minutes, and then the control group always have a third or second group as a control group where they don't do anything, okay? That is more valid uh, or reliable than just testing those two groups. So and that's controlled. And when you say placebo, placebo means you either do give them the real medication because these are used in, in medical studies, these termino this terminology, that's why it's called placebo. But in my case, my control group will, would be the placebo. So placebo is the sugar pill, reg the other group would take the re real pill or real vaccine and you know how they designed this vaccine studies and now the entire public knows how to design an experimental study and they had a, a placebo group and they had the vaccine group. Yes, Vijay. Yeah, so uh, so I think my understanding so far, right, is that you're talking about experimental research and then and then within experimental research, it can be divided into uh, basically that uh, basic research and clinical trials. 
And then for the basic research, right, uh, it's characterized by the use on animals. And also you mentioned vitro, which is the test tubes. And then the clinical trials is the experimental research that's done on humans, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so could, could you explain the, so I, so, okay, you said that the, okay, you mentioned placebo and control group, right? So I understand that placebo is basically like the fake one, the, the fake pill or whatever, right? That they just give, mm -hmm. right? Right. But I, I, so I, you, you mentioned control group. They don't do any, they, they, they don't do anything to the control group, but I, I am still unclear in my understanding of like, what is the purpose of the control group in the experiment? to validate your data because you know when you don't have the control group you might get some results and you might think as a, a researcher that is a very good question you might think as a researcher that you know yes there for example resting metabolic rate increase in my situation mm -hmm. okay or the vaccine case vaccine example yes their symptoms got improved but if you can't compare it to something else, like a reference point, okay, mm -hmm. you would never know if the results are due to what, the inter what intervention you used. In my case, it's my high intensity interval training routine. In the vaccine case, it's the vaccine. Yes, their symptoms improved, but maybe for some other reason, maybe for some other variable that you didn't control. That's why you got to control. Does it make sense? Okay, so um, yeah. Sure. So you have a con yeah, you have a control. Okay, my understanding from what you said is that you ha they have a control group so that uh, like even if even if some result comes, right? You're mm -hmm. trying to how do you know that result is coming from from what you're trying to test for, right? That, that's Perfect. that. Perfect. Right? Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because the result could be coming from something else, right? So yep. like and to validate it, to validate that the result is coming from what you're testing for, that's why they have the control group. Exactly. And you're going to collect the data from everyone, no matter if they're in the control group or, you know, the exercise group or the vaccine group, you're going to collect whatever data you're looking for from every single person, then run your statistics. And then you can see the differences between the groups. Okay. When you have the control, that would, uh, that would work or serve as your reference, like a baseline, okay? Yeah. Um, there's a, a question, I think. Of course, it, it is okay. You can leave. I'm going to record this and I'm going to post it, including the PowerPoint uh, slides. Then let's come to the blind, uh, blind, blindness. What is blindness? The blindness of a study is crucial. It eliminates the possibility that a participant's personal beliefs will undermine the study's validity. So what does that mean? Yes, I do have the groups, okay? And I cannot give my example for this case because it's, it, you can't really blind me or the participants for the exercise program but you can blind the participants and the researcher for the vaccine. Let's talk about the vaccine situation. So to prevent bias, uh, you will, as the researcher, not know if you're giving the vaccine or the placebo to the participant. And the participant, that means I am, I am blinded. Okay, that's called single blinded. And then the participant also doesn't know if they're taking, getting the vaccine, the real thing, or the fake one, or the placebo, okay? That means your emotions, because now your brain is uh, going to be conditioned to get better if you knew that you got the vaccine, okay? Then that would affect the results. That's why you don't know if you're getting the placebo or the vaccine. So two sides are blind in this, in this experimental design, both the researcher and the, um, and the participant. Of course, there is a data that is you know, kept somewhere else by someone else, but the researcher and the participant doesn't know what they're getting and what they're giving. That's called double-blinded study. 
and the randomized is how you choose participants for your groups, okay? So again, randomization prevents bias in the study and makes sure the, the groups are, um, how do I say, equal in terms of their characteristics, okay? Uniform. Um, for example, in my case, I'm gonna have the high-intensity interval training exercise continuous exercise group and the control group. I cannot assign the potential or prospect participants to the groups. I need to have a randomized system to assign my participants who were volunteering to you know, join my study, but I cannot tell them, okay, uh, Liz, you go to the, because you love high intensity interval training, you should be in the high intensity interval training. And okay, um, uh, VJ, you don't like exercising, so just go in the control group. I can't, I shouldn't do that because that is gonna totally eliminate the validity of my data. And the groups will not be uniform in terms of, you know, sex, in terms of fitness level, height, weight, and stuff like that. If you follow a randomized uh, approach, and you should, user, you know, even the Google now generates random numbers. So just using a, a, gen, a number, gener, random number generator and assign your participants into your groups with the randomization, then you're, you're gonna be fine. That's why this kind of a study is called gold standard in the clinical trials. So when you're looking for your articles, okay, make sure you understand this phenomenon and try to look for articles who are that are double blinded, randomized, and placebo controlled, or just controlled. Okay, then the study is done. Okay, we collected the data, we did the design, and now we, we are publishing our our uh, article in a journal. So article is different than a journal study is different than an article. That's why I want to, to, for you to set this right from the beginning and use the right terminology in your papers. Article is not the, article is the paper form, like the public form of the study. Research is the research study and research can be used interchangeably, uh, but article is not the same thing as the study. So, uh, article ha will have an abstract introduction, methods. These are the components of the published research. Results, discussion, references, finding source. That's where you're going to find the answers to those questions in the collaboration work that we're going to we're going to do next week. Okay, and for your paper, uh, and for future reference too. So, what is an abstract? It's a summary of what was studied, how it was studied. Um, the results and implications. It is a brief summary of the study. Uh, you have to use this as the reader or potential audience to evaluate whether the study is of interest to you or is it is something that you're looking for. But it, you should not limit your reading to just reading the abstract and you know uh, not carrying the rest of the, the article. So it's just a summary. It doesn't provide nearly enough detail to enable readers to assess the validity of a study or put it into content. content. And you won't find your answers to the questions that you need to include in your paper in the abstract, but it's going to give you a great idea about what the study is all about and what they found out. You will even see the result, the finding of the study. Then the introduction part explains why study was conducted and the purpose of the study. Uh, be, this is one of the questions in your um, worksheet that you're gonna use to answer the quest, the, 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 put together your paper, of course, not in a question answer form, but first you need to work on that worksheet to answer the question. So this is where you're gonna find the purpose. Why was this study conducted? They're gonna explicitly explain or state it in the introduction. Then it's gonna present the background research, why, like how we have come to this point, okay? Because I have been doing this and this research found this and 
their conflicting results or we have we wanted to replicate their research whatever reason that you know, or whatever literature review that they conducted before they conducted the study, they're going to mention in the introduction. And you will see the clear titles in every published study. And then here they will present research question and hypothesis too, because this is one of the other questions. What was the hypothesis? Then in the methods section, you will see the study design. Here you will find out if it was a double blinded or single blinded or if it was a blinded study at all or randomized or you know sampling method um, or uh, what was the third one? Oh, there was a control group. So they're gonna, let's review the slide, explains how the study was conducted and allows the reader to determine if research is valid because methods set the, the tone of the study, setting of the study, the variables. Variables are very important. Like Vijay was saying, cause and effect. What is the X? What is the Y? When I change the X, Y increases or decreases or doesn't change, or there's a linear relationship or there's not a linear relationship. So you will see the variables uh, articulated in this uh, portion of the article. Participants. How many participants? Characteristics, what sex they're coming from. We don't use the term gender anymore uh, because gender is a so socially constructed subject or a, a you know, concept. We don't wanna use that. Sex is your biological sex. So number, characteristics, number of study groups and the control group, okay? Um, how data were collected in the lab, on the field, where did they go, how did they, how, did, did participants spend the night at night? In my case, they should. Um, that's why it's a very difficult study it, because they're gonna be prisoned to the lab for three days in a row. So it is a really difficult study to conduct. And then the sampling method, randomization, and you will see some, um, implications as to if this was a strength or a weakness, if the sample size was very small, like sometimes you will see our, in our case, exercise studies, only five athletes joining the study because it was performed at the peak of the Pikes Peak, for example, because they're looking at a high altitude study. And of course it is not that feasible to bring 30 or 60, 100 athletes up to the top and you won't be able to find uh, so many elite athletes uh, to join your specific uh, study. So that doesn't tell you all the time, sample size when it is small, it, it doesn't necessarily show weakness all the time. And the results. Results section will have a lot of numbers, will have a lot of figures, will have a lot of tables and statistics that they're explaining, the p-values and you know x's, y's and the graphs. It's awesome. The descriptive statistics, they're going to talk about the mean, for example, the mean age of the participants or the mean VO2 max levels, baseline levels, everything will be if you are a data freak, you will go to the results section and analyze their graphs, analyze the data. Um, then the discussion portion, they're gonna draw conclusions. That's the interpretation of the researchers of their data. This is so important. But if you are an expert in the field, you might interpret their data differently. That's, that, that is very interesting. That's why these studies are published and then the uh, researchers might uh, collaborate on the, uh, the result, the findings in terms of drawing conclusions from the findings. Then you will, uh, they will give insight into the topic. They're gonna compare your result, their results to the other results. Uh, they may present alternative explanations for the results. Uh, or they may not. Um, you'll see in the study that I'm giving you that they, they are going to, and they may discuss strengths and limitations of the study. Uh, 
here you will you have to respect the researcher's point of view when you write your paper when you, you get to this section where you discuss the weaknesses of, or and limitations of the study and i'm a little sensitive about this topic because in the past i've seen students raging and raving about how this study was not conducted so you know not good and sample size was too bad like a, looking down on the study with a very strong judgment personal judgment for some reason i don't know because this is a critique assignment but some students take it literal even though they're not the expert they're just making up um some weaknesses okay so unless you feel confident about what you're talking about try to stay away from those personal judgments yes you can suggest something you can say maybe if they included older people in this study or they didn't include because you know again today i'm going to say this once and please remember this forever for your future and don't forget open your ears when your participants are focused for example if i just choose to do females in my study or if i just choose to do males in my study or if i just choose to really hone it down and say older females or college aged males that makes a study stronger not weaker and for some reason students think that you know including everyone in one study would make the study stronger for some reason but as we were just discussing with uh, uh, vj when you introduce so many different variables like sex age fitness level you're going to be introducing many confusing or in the research world we use the word confounding variables onto the results so you will never know the result that you had let's say increased metabolism was caused by the person's age because it's so mixed but if you keep it under control to a specific population because your study is just a drop in the ocean remember you're not going to generalize your findings to for for you know once and all this is not the end of the world yet there are going to be more studies coming into this topic and more people will research about it so this is just a contribution to the literature body of literature therefore you should not look at this as you know if they included males and you know maybe um i don't know other states or this and that then it's going to make the city weaker that's what i'm saying for example females go through hormonal uh, fluctuations even during the month and you will read in studies that some researchers find females not just females but females during their for example uh luteal phase of their menstrual cycle because then you are eliminating hormones affecting the results okay so that's the way you should be looking at strength and limitations and again try to stay away from uh harsh personal judgments here i had a quick question yes yeah so uh, so i think my understanding right from what you're saying is that like the more like the more specific your group is it's actually a good thing right like in your example as you had mentioned right like exactly uh, right okay yeah because like i just just having like a generalized group that incorporates everyone actually is not beneficial right yeah no it yeah, is yeah. going to be so confusing like yeah. the results you won't know if it was caused caused by their age their sex because that's also a variable in your study now you didn't right. want that but the, now that is a, a variable right right yeah so exactly right so as you mentioned a very specific concentrated group like you know uh like uh, i don't know males age 30 to 35 
uh, it's, a, it's a very good thing to have a very specified group as you were mentioning. Of course, it depends on your, uh, what you're looking, looking at, you know, if you think that that would, if it, for example, 30 to 35 is really specific, but you can say adult population, if you know from the background research that you did that age wouldn't affect the results of, for example, um, fitness level, VO2 max increase, actually it does, uh, but something else, you can say the mood, for example, then you can just limit it to adult population, adult males. So mm -hmm. it depends on your topic, but in general, I would say focused groups are better. Yeah. And it's not a weakness, it's a strength. Right, focus groups are better. Yeah. And in terms of the, um, uh, oh, the double blinded and single blinded, right? So yes. at least uh, my understanding is that so in, in any experiment, right, like uh, there'll be like a researchers on one side, there, there'll be two groups basically, right? Mm -hmm. have researchers and then on one side, and then on the other side, you'll have participants, right? So, yeah. uh, so it's like, it's like a double blinded where both the researcher, can it be defined as double blinded as both the researchers and participants do not realize they're participant, they're in the experiment. And it, single, single blinded means that only like, only either the researcher knows that they're an experiment and the participant doesn't know, or the participant knows they're in the experiment and the researcher doesn't know. Is that the correct understanding? Uh, in general, participants don't know when you talk about single-blinded. Okay. Researchers know, and that's not a good thing. Okay, so, so single-blinded means that, uh, part of my understanding is, uh, uh, um, yeah, so single-blinded okay. participants don't know, and mm -hmm. double-blinded means both the researchers and participants don't know they're in the experiment. Yep, exactly. Thank okay. you for the summary. Okay, thank you. Now, the final page uh, or final section in the article will be the references, which should be in your paper too, okay? References page should be a separate page. It cannot be just an adjunct to the last page as a, a different paragraph. It should be a separate page. Uh, in this <clears throat> case, <clears throat> real article case, allows the reader to find other sources on the information on the topic. It's very valuable because these are the studies that are often mentioned in their article and they already cited in their article. They cannot plagiarize like, you know, it's their ideas. Whatever suggestion you make in your article, if it's not coming from your study or from your, um, your uh, research world, you have, you are getting it from somewhere. This is also true for your assignments, by the way. It, you are going to get it from either a textbook. You cannot say it's just a common knowledge, you know. You need to exercise to lose weight. When you make a suggestion like that, you cannot um, claim the ownership of that statement by not citing that statement in your paper. It is true for the articles that are published. Therefore, they are already mentioning the studies and citing the, article, citing the studies in the text. Then you see the list of those references in, at the end of their, their part, article or paper. It should be the case for your papers too, okay? Whatever you use, can be my slides, can be the textbook, it can be the articles that you're gonna write about, it should be the article that you're writing about has to be there anyways, but you can add more. That's what I'm trying to say. Because I know from experience, uh, st uh, students like to introduce the topic that they're gonna write about with a paragraph where they make a lot of you know, statements, bold statements, <laughs> like you know, you need to eat, healthy and to lose weight because this study that I'm giving you next week is about losing weight, okay? And um, they're introducing it and then in the discussion they're also coming up with a great conclusion that they're suggesting, but still you didn't do the study so you cannot suggest, make any suggestions or a statement. They need to come from uh, a resource which should be cited in text and listed in the references page. And finally, funding source could be um, indicated. Sometimes they don't indicate it, but sometimes funding um, concept can be contraindicated because you know if you're looking at benefits of a product, certain product, and the funding 
of the project is the product owner, there might be some conflict of interest issues about, you know, okay, we found that this product supports the claims of this product. Uh, yeah, claims made by the products company, but the products company is giving us the money to do the research. So yeah, they need to mention that, but not all the time when the product owner funds the study, it doesn't necessarily have to tell you that this there is a conflict of interest. You cannot generalize that either. So I just wanted to mention that there can be the funding page. Okay, let's turn our focus to different types of articles. These are not research studies. These are published articles. Okay, guys, again, this is another highlight of my presentation for your uh, assignments coming up, including consumer product, including the analysis of literature review. So uh, these are articles, not studies. They're very valuable articles, but they're called not research study articles, but they're called review studies or meta-analysis. A review study is very valuable. I love the review studies because what they do is actually is a literature review of all the, the studies that have been done on that specific topic. For in my case, high intensity interval training and metabolism. They take the highlights of the studies that has been done in the past and highlighting everything we know on the topic to date uh, and then write a review study. Okay, it's like a literature review article. That's good to get to get up to speed on a topic, but this is not the study you want to select for your second, uh, second assignment then you won't be able to answer any of the questions that we're giving you in the worksheet. Who are the participants? You're gonna be like, what? There are no participants. What are the methods? There is no method. Because what they're doing is they're discussing the past studies as a summary or synthesizing those study findings to give you a better idea about that certain topic. Meta-analysis is the most legitimate um, of all of the review. Review study is just a discussion, but in the meta-analysis, they do the same thing, but they run statistics, okay? Of the statistics of the data that comes from the past studies. So that is a, a very powerful data. But again, you don't wanna use a meta-analysis because it's not a research study article. I okay. Just one one side sorry, sorry professor <laughs> it's, i'm I, i'm i think you're you're trying to explain the difference between a few things right uh, I'm, I'm a little i'm a little bit confused uh, unclear in my understanding so what are you trying to explain the difference between article and study and something else no no i'm talking about when you sit down <clears throat> on your computer <clears throat> excuse me to find an article you're going to come up with regular research articles. That means they did a study and they published an article, like a story of the study, like I showed you, abstract introduction methods, blah, blah. And then you will see a review study. That's an article too, review study article. And then you will see, you will bump into these articles when you do your search. That's what I'm saying, meta-analysis too. You should not be choosing a review study or a meta-analysis. And how can you tell? They're gonna say it in their abstract. They're gonna end the, the abstract with the statement, this is a review study on this blah, blah topic. Okay. You don't want to choose a review study article. You don't want to choose a meta-analysis article. You want to choose an experimental stu research study article. Okay. So when we're doing our research, right, uh, my understanding is that there's three types of like articles. You have research articles, review study articles, and meta-analysis articles. You, yes. do not, you do not want us to choose the review study article or the meta-analysis. You do want us to choose the uh, research article. That's what you're trying to tell us. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Now, 
let's now we we covered the scientific approach now let's turn our focus to our assignment yes this is about the number two but except for step one it applies to number one too so everybody pay attention and this is such a, a, a precious uh, meeting with all of you today we have never done this in the past and then we end up grading low quality papers and getting our students frustrated with low grades so we decided to do this and hopefully it's going to benefit all of us okay so let's talk about your assignments even though again i repeat it says number two it relate it is relevant for number one too except for finding your article because we already did this okay so step one how are you going to find your article it's going to be a peer-reviewed paper of an experimental research study published less than 10 years within the last less than within the last 10 years i should say and not a review or meta-analysis so this is your guideline when you're looking for an article that's number one you have three resources Google Scholar, which I use and I love, okay? MLK, our library, has its own database, which is great because you can download the full text of the article. Google Scholar, you never know if you're gonna be able to find, yes, you will be able to read the abstract of the study, but not all the studies are available in Google Scholar. But in our library, we are, subscribing to many databases with lots and lots of academic journals okay so make sure you click on this link that i'm gonna post okay and go to the library page and do your research and here is my bonus for you this is for another class that i teach the last video watch video i said we also we recorded our library liaison for our department kinesiology department i recorded a video about how to you know it's it's a tutorial about how to use the library page and how to go to, through the research um, process about a specific topic she's giving examples typing it up for you how to do, limit it to peer-reviewed journals and it's such a great valuable video if you are having a hard time how to find an article then make sure you watch this video step one continue with how are we finding our articles keywords are well key okay so you're going to enter the keywords so in this example i am using exercise and cognitive performance for example what are the keywords here? Exercise, cognitive, performance. You can use three words, three different keywords, three levels. In the video, you, you will see and on the library page, you can enter, there are um, um, fields where you can enter your keywords, okay? Uh, and I think there are three levels. You can either combine those three into one level and enter. You guys know much better how to do a research. You can use and words, or words, or just separate the words um, individually and enter them by three levels. Use scientific terms, try the combination. So good studies lead you to more good studies because once you download or look at the PDF, there is going to be links to the references. So you can click on the link to go to another study. That's great. Uh, if you're not sure about the study that you found and you want to present and write your paper about, make sure you contact me. If you are sure, you don't have to, you don't get, need to get a confirmation, but if you are not sure, you can send me the PDF and I could say, yeah, it's good to go or no, just keep looking. This is not good. Step two, this applies to both. 
analysis of scientific literature one and two. So this is coming up so soon. This also applies to consumer product. All of your assignments format is the same. Three to four pages, they need to be typed. Times New Roman or Arial are great uh, fonts to use, 12 points, double spaced, because we enter comments in between. Uh, should be left justified, do not write justify or align, excuse me, which centers text and have one inch margins from left and right, top and bottom. APA format. If you are not familiar with APA, there, are, uh, there is a link on the assignment uh, instructions on Canvas that takes you to a summary of an APA format. It's a little bit different than, than the MLA. Um, make sure you use the APA format. It's not a rocket science. It's a little bit different because we don't use numbers in APA format. We have a, a specific uh, formatting where we use the author name uh, and the year in text and that references is a little bit different. <clears throat> And step three, make sure you read the instructions. S students sometimes skip reading the instructions. That's why we're holding this actually <laughs> lecture <clears throat> on the assignment instructions. These are coming from your assignment packet. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so content wise, your language makes a huge difference. It has to be scientific, not personal, and not first person, and not direct statements. So let me give you an example of a direct and indirect statement that I'm talking about. First of all, you were not in the research team, were you? No. You're not part of the research team, and you weren't there when they conducted their data collection. So you cannot talk on behalf of the researchers. So your, sta your statements should not start with the word researchers found their participants from news ads. This is acceptable to a degree, but not the best version of saying participants were recruited through ad newspaper ads. I hope you can see the difference. The first statement is a direct statement. Subject is the, uh, the first word in the sentence. The second one, the object is the first word in the sentence. So you're going to be safe. You won't make a mistake if you follow the indirect version version of the statements. Try not to talk on behalf of the researchers, please. You weren't there, you cannot say they did this, they, they, they done that, uh, they believe. You don't know what they believe. You can always say it was stated. That's the, the safest bet. Uh, or it was concluded, okay? So those, those are, that's the type of language you want to use in all of your assignments. No first person. You cannot make your own suggest, suggestions like, I believe, I think, I'm going to write a pay, I'm going to write about blah, blah. No, always try to mimic the statement, that, the statements or the, the type of language or attitude that you read from the article. That's the scientific language we're talking about. Are you, Always are you, use past tense. Yes, Vijay. Yeah, sorry, sorry again. But no. it's are you, okay. Yeah, are you saying so? Okay, my understanding is like uh, you're saying to use like it is right. It it was it was uh, found that this I don't know something something like that right. Use was it is or it was use that type of uh, sentence structure. Exactly. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you're asking these questions. You are contributing because that now I know it, you're listening, you're, you're with me, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then past tense. First of all, my heads up for you, don't mix tenses across your paper. So 
throughout the paper, you have to be consistent with the tense that you're using, and it has to be past tense when it comes to talking about the study. It was done. It was said. It was found. Participants were. Okay? So don't use um, present tense. Briefly describe and then critically analyze a professional critique, not contain overly personal opinion-based judgments and do not use direct quotes, okay? This is just a small paper, three to four pages long. Direct quotes are used in serious textbooks or articles that are published. Even the article that you're gonna see, you'll see nobody is using direct quotes. You're not writing us an art paper where you quote, a, you know, maybe a, a paragraph or a couple statements from a famous person you don't need to do that. You always paraphrase and cite whatever concept that you want to discuss. No direct quotes. You're going to get your points taken off. Okay, finally, this is what we're going to do next week, Monday. Don't forget. These are the questions in the worksheet. You can either put them on a Google Doc to collaborate, collaborate with the group members easily. Everybody can type or you can have your own documents to answer these questions. These questions are in your instructions, by the way, on Canvas. I'm not gonna give you these questions again. They're already there. So these are the questions you need to answer. But as you see here, no question and answer in your paper. Your paper should be written in a narrative form. So these are the questions. What is the research problem? Uh, what was this? Why was the study conducted? Let me see the chat. It's the whole group because we're using just one article okay. for the first assignment. Then the then your individual paper that you're going to do for number two is is your own individual answers, of course, because it's your own article. There's going to be four different articles uh, for your group members. But this one is just one article. I already gave you the article. You should read it, by the way, before you show up for class next week. Uh, and maybe answer the questions before even come into the collaboration. But the reason we're doing the collaboration is to confirm your answers with one another and to see if you're on the right track. And I'll be there to guide you. I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'll guide you to find the right answers, like a counselor. Where is, it, where is it posted in Canvas? It's in the instructions. When you click on the assignment, uh, analysis of scientific literature, number one, which uh -huh. is coming up, you'll see all these questions. But I can just copy paste it on the chat box. Uh, it, it's not a big deal. Then you can just copy and paste it in the Google Doc and share it with your group members. If you want to start working on it over the weekend, yeah, Be my guest with your I mean, you know who the group members are. Uh, so I'll just put you into breakout rooms on Monday into your um, during our regular class time, by the way, this is not going to be a combined class because it, then it's going to be a mess. The regular time show up and I'll put you in your group out, breakout rooms and then you will answer these questions for the article that I already assigned for you for the first assignment. I have a question. So if we're, so right now you're reviewing the group projects, correct? So if we're not, if we're not assigned to this first half of the semester, we're basically just, I mean, we're just learning how to do it for when we go or is, are these questions due Monday? I'm kind of thrown off a little bit. These are the same questions that you're going to have to answer for the first, which is for everyone, everyone. Yeah. Okay, first assignment is due. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's due in two weeks for everyone. It's a okay. practice assignment for the second one. So the second assignment that you're gonna write either with me or with Tony, your nutrition instructor, it'll mimic the first one. The entire purpose of the first assignment is to give you a practice run for the real thing, which is the number two. Does it make sense? Yeah. I was just 
kind of, I was just trying to make sure that I was on the right track because I, so I'm not, for example, I'm not assigned until next, uh, the next half of the semester, but I want to make sure that what we're learning right now is what we're doing for the group project. So for instance, next Zoom call, like do we don't have anything specific to do, right? We're just like learning overall right now what we're going to be doing. No, 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 you're mistaken. Uh, yeah, it also applies for the for the first assignment that is that is due for every single one of you with me. Okay, which is the one you just said in two weeks. Yes, and these okay. questions are good for that assignment too, as well as the number two. Okay, because it depends on the study, you will have to answer these questions anyways. That's why you got to look at the rubric of all the assignments that are coming up. The rubric will tell you where you're going to lose points or gain points. Okay, so what is the research problem? If you can answer this question in your paper, in your writing, then you'll, you'll get the points for that item in the rubric. Then the second, what are the hypotheses or what is the hypothesis? Hypotheses stated by the authors, if not stated directly, can you draw it from what they're trying to say? Who are the study, who were the study participants? What were the, so this, these questions are good for number one assignment, number one literature analysis, it's a long word, analysis of scientific literature, number one practice assignment that is coming up soon, as well as for the number two assignment that is gonna be with me or your nutrition instructor. I wanna make sure everybody is clear on this. Yeah, I, I had a quick question on that. Yes. Yeah, okay, so uh, uh, I think, so my understanding, right, as we were all discussing, um, uh, so wait, when is, when is next class? When is next class? It's uh, Monday. Next, next, next Monday, right? During class time. So the, what is the 8th? February 8th? Yes. Time? Okay, February 8th. Yeah, so by February 8th, we should have, I mean, you, uh, we're, working, we're working on the scientific, that's my understanding. My understanding is that we're working on the current scientific article number one, and that article you already assigned to us, right? So we should have like read that article and started answering these questions by the time February 8th comes. When yeah. you show up. Yeah, uh, yeah, which is, we, we, yeah, which is next class, February 8th. Yeah, so before the February 8th, which is Sunday, February 7th, my birthday, by the way, you'll oh, be I reading this article. <laughs> okay. So I, have a, I have a quick question. So we're gonna be doing, so obviously we're gonna be reading the article and then are we gonna be put into groups to do that assignment mm -hmm. as, no, as a group? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. This, group thing is just to help you out but you'll be writing your own paper on your own yeah of course the own paper but um in step four in the last slide was that like that was for the groups that we were put into right we're going to answer these questions together i get i'm guessing and then okay yeah. sorry i was just you'll a find these answers a together and with the help of me next to you you know being next to you i can if you're not sure about okay i don't know what the real hypothesis of this study we as a group you should be collaborating that's why i'm creating this avenue for you you'll be discussing with one another if you couldn't find the hypothesis and you know you're like i don't know maybe one of you can't find it one of you couldn't that's why we're coming together to make sure that your answers are correct and then i'll be joining your breakout room to see if you're doing okay, if you're confused to help you out because I know the study, I read it. Okay, and then based on the answers that we get, then we'll go ahead and write our own papers, correct? Based yes. on the answers that we receive. Exactly, and I was uh, gonna okay. just go to the canvas after I'm done with this and show you the assignment instructions where you uh, can find the link to the article where you see the instructions and these questions. Got it, thank you for the clarification. Sure. Okay, another chat. Yeah. Is anyone else lost? Just wondering. Oh, are you lost? Are you cl clear now? Yeah, <laughs> much, much clearer. Thank you. Yeah, our, under, our understanding is just, just two things, right? How many things? Two things, right? Two things, which is the read, basically read the article you're going to assign us and then start answering the questions. Uh, and then that if you is optional. You can answer the questions together. Or if you want to be really prepared, you can start answering the questions on your own too. 
yeah yeah okay sure sounds good so one mandatory thing and then <laughs> one other optional thing yeah yes okay <laughs> thanks then write your paper okay again this is applies to number one and number two review the grading rubric there 50 points is this this 50 point thing is only good for number two number one is only 20 points because it's a practice assignment but for the real one 35 related to quality writing not directly addressing answering questions writing cohesively cohesively 10 for writing spelling grammar five for basic format so five point penalty for partial full day late so we don't want to be late for the practice assignment, you'll still see your points out of 50, but they're going to affect your overall grade by 4%, which is 20 points. Hope it makes sense. And step six, this is for the ideal student that I'm looking for. Read the first draft of your paper you wrote. Proofread it, please. Reread the assignment instructions and grading rubric to check against your paper. Make sure the rubric items are addressed with your paper, with your writing. Then edit your draft if it requires editing. Have a trusted person proof your second draft, proofread your second draft. Edit second draft based on the feedback and upload your paper to Canvas and exhale and then get your 50 points out of 50 hopefully i'm really praying for that okay now any questions and you know we can also use the q a help forum if we have any general questions that would benefit everyone else oh i had a question Madeline, yes. So um, I, I kind of understand how the, how the process is now for this, for this analysis of scientific literature assignment. So I'm just trying to, I just wanted to clarify. So the question thing we do as a group, but the answers we get, we write our own paper for that, yes. right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding that correctly. Yeah, the questions, I think it's a group thing, right? And, but, right, so we work as a team to get the questions and then the paper we'll, we'll write individually and submit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me just, I was just getting to that point. Bear oh. with me. Yeah. Am I sharing my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so you go to your, I don't know, your either section 10 or 12 canvas page, it doesn't matter, it's the same. Click on assignments. Mm -hmm. Now, do you see the practice assignment on top? It's 4% 4 per, 4 of total. It's here. And then do you see the second one down there? Real assignments, number two, which is your oral presentation paper. It's this one, which is not gonna be done by every single one of you with me. But yes, every single one of you will do it either with me or with uh, your nutrition instructor. But this one, I, let me I'm sorry. go to see your screen. Yeah, we don't see, on your screen, we see the present, original presentation. We don't see- oh, That's what I was asking. Okay, I'm so sorry then. I'm sharing the wrong screen. Yeah. Let's start over. <laughs> yeah, you. okay, yeah, now we see your can. We see your canvas, yeah. Okay, that's where I want it to be. Okay, yes. and then I'm going to get my little annotator. So this is the practice assignment that we're going to be doing the collaboration work for. Number one, practice. And it's going to affect your grade by 4%. It's still going to be out of 50 points, okay? Mm -hmm. But 50 times 4% is 20 points. So this assignment will be done by everyone. So don't think that this, this is only for the fitness groups. But this one, which is the same thing, 
these are same thing, which is analysis of scientific literature. That's my whole presentation. How do you critique a, a scientific literature article? Okay, this is only, see it says multiple dates because I assigned this to fitness groups with me for March 17 and nutrition groups will do this assignment as well as the oral presentation May 10. Is this clear? Yeah, okay, so the 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 first the, the one on the top, right? Analysis of scientific. Yeah, yeah. Sure, so, this yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So th yeah, that that's the one we're gonna work on now, right? Yeah. So, Look at the due date, February 15th. It's coming up. Now yeah. let's let's click on it. Okay. Let me just clear everything. Now click on this assignment and get into the instructions. This is what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. You already read the, this article, how to understand and interpret food and this is the IFIC article, okay. which okay. I presented today. Yeah. Then if you're, your first half of the semester is in the fitness, which it is right now, you're yeah. gonna read and analyze this article that I'm assigning. You can preview uh -huh. and download the article we mm -hmm. I already chose for you. It's, yeah was published in 2012. It's by the Willis et al. Okay. Uh, and the article starts from here. And, and I know if you're not familiar with the, the terminology of the scientific world, it might sound a little challenging. That's why I'm bringing you together to be chatting about it like oh my god did you guys understand what they meant by this and that that's why you're going to be in the breakout rooms to answer your questions so i tried to find uh, an article that sounds relevant for your re lives you know weight loss everybody's somehow interested in the topic so this is the um this is the abstract of the article we talked about Okay, summary. And then you're gonna go down oops, and read the methods. Let me just clear all drawings and read the methods and then look at the charts, results, and everything that we talked about. And these are the references. So this is the article that you're gonna read. Then yeah. group, group collaboration for this practice. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and I'll be helping you at the same time during your regular class time. And the details and format can be found in the assignment packet, which I already covered. And here are the questions that I'm talking about. You can copy and paste these into a Google Doc and you can even start collaborating this weekend. If not, you will answer these questions on Monday. Sure. Yeah, it's the, and then the due date is February 15 for for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and you will after re after answering these questions, you will go about your own way and write your own paper. Right. Yeah. So the article name right for us, it's that effects of aerobic and or resistance training on body mass. Yep. That's the one. Okay. Yes. Good, good. Now go back to the modules, which is, this is today, right? And I'm gonna post the link to our meeting today. I'll put it in the module and also put the link here. Now yeah. I don't have the recording yet, but I will. And I also attach the PowerPoint slides to it. So you will have it. Then go back to the modules of the next week. This is important to get ahead and check out what's going on next week. This is the overview. It's going to tell you what happened, what is happening Wednesday. That's why the week thing or module thing is a little off because the, the semester started on the month, Wednesday. So this is today. We're doing it today. And then the Monday, live Zoom, and then your regular class time. 
for for uh, section 10 and then for section 12 it's going to be 130 and collaboration work with your group mates for the first writing assignment I review and discuss chapter one and two because you will be doing the chapter one and two on your own this coming Wednesday you can also ask questions about those chapters but I don't think you will have any but if you do I mean I don't mind answering your chapter one and two questions, but those are the um, easiest chapters. And then click here, February 8th is when we do the collaboration and it is explained here too. During the collaborative Zoom meeting, you will be working in your pre-assigned groups of the first assignment. This one, you can even click on it and go to the assignment directly. If you haven't already looked, you can click within the people on the left sidebar here to see what nutrition or fitness group you've been assigned uh, and meet your three group mates. Please try not to miss the group collaboration class because it gives you a chance to work with the three other students. You will also be working uh, yeah. uh, with your oral presentation. So you might as well get familiar with each other. Now, there's no penalty for missing this class, but you know, you will get extra 10 points if you join it and also you will get the benefit of answering the questions together, working together. And then after this lecture, you will take your notes and write your own paper, okay? Do not plagiarize. Everybody will write their own paper and submit on Canvas. We offer this collaboration for your first paper to try and make it easier to accomplish. Four brains working on it together usually results in a better analysis. That's about it, my friends. Okay. Any yes. questions? I have a question. Of course. Um, so this class on this date starts at 12 p.m. or is this at our standard time? Standard, whatever section you are in. If you're in 12, then it's 1.30, Andrew. I can't remember which one you, you belong to. I was just showing you section 10. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So on, on February 8th, 2021, right, for, for people who are in section 10, will be showing up at 12 p.m. Yes, and then section 12 will be showing up at 1.30, and then I will have a list of your groups, and then I, I'll assign you to the breakout rooms manually. It takes a little time, so just you have to bear with me. Yeah. I'm going to stop recording.